If spreading glorious democracy and squashing every bug and robot in the galaxy is your calling, nay, your destiny, then have we got the build for you. High Threat, as we're calling it, is designed for players that typically like playing aggressively. The build features a number of things that really aid in pushing objectives and clearing out enemies quickly while still synergizing with the team well. It is definitely about hogging all that glorious democracy with this build, so let's get into it. When it comes to running and gunning, you'll need the right weapon for the job. In the early game, you'll want to invest in the SMG-37 Defender, which is effectively a more capable Liberator, the starting gun. Really what matters here is the increased base damage, and by staying relatively close to enemies when using the weapon, you're maximizing its potential. Where things get really fun is when you unlock the SG-225 Breaker, the same shotgun we talked about in the support build. This thing is currently just too good to pass up because it features blistering damage, a high rate of fire, and is magazine fed unlike the Punisher shotgun, which is reloaded one shell at a time. For a secondary weapon, the P-19 Redeemer continues to be our gun of choice. It's another strong early game option that really can't be beat and provides high damage when you need it in a pinch. With all Helldiver 2 builds, things really pop off when talking about stratagems, and here you'll see a really interesting array of call-ins. First is the Auto Cannon, which is a high-caliber, semi-automatic, anti-armor weapon. This thing cuts through most armored targets with relative ease, and while it doesn't have the same effect as the Recoilless, it's damn effective at taking out most medium-class enemies, like those automaton walkers that look like ATSTs from Star Wars. Even Chargers, those challenging, terminated enemies, can be cracked with ease with this thing by simply dodging their initial charge and unloading a few rounds into its fleshy backside. As soon as they visually pop, they can't charge anymore and will eventually bleed out. In this case, you'll want to run the auto cannon and hold onto your own backpack, which will allow you to self-reload. As always, it's slower when you're self-reloading, but not nearly as bad as the self-reload on the recoilless. The second stratagem is the Eagle Airstrike, a strong call-in, deadly when solo, and even more potent in a group. It features two uses per rearm, and the rearm time is actually quite manageable. The advantage the Eagle Airstrike has over most other Eagle call-ins is that it has the ability to kill both terminated hides and automaton bunkers. When you're trying to push into a nest or encampment, being able to take out spawning facilities can't be underestimated. Whenever enemies or spawn locations the airstrike doesn't kill is when you'd bring out the autocannon to finish the job from a distance. The third stratagem is the Gatling Sentry, and I think by now you realize just how powerful this is, especially early on in progression. It's a solid offensive and defensive choice and can be used to great effect in a number of situations. The key to being aggressive with the Sentry is to place it in a location that will target your enemies, but allow you and your allies to stay out of the line of fire, providing support without hampering your team. That combination of flexibility and pure firepower is almost unrivaled early on. The last stratagem in this build is the HMG in placement, and I genuinely think this call-in is being overlooked by a vast majority of players. Instead of an automated sentry, the HMG in placement gives you or a member of your team a manned turret that fires high caliber rounds that can take out pretty much anything outside of the largest and most heavily armored enemies. This is great as an offensive call-in with the right positioning, but it's also fantastic when engaging with any number of hold your ground style engagements at points of interest. It might be an unconventional choice, but it's certainly one we found effective. This build is one that can easily be expanded as you gain access to more resources and thus can unlock more stratagems. To start, we're replacing our HMG emplacement with the Auto Cannon Sentry. This gives us insane anti-armor capabilities and can even crack the armor of Chargers and Bile Titans, so long as you keep it at range and keep it protected because it will draw aggro. That means we can replace the Auto Cannon with a different support weapon. If you want additional anti-armor, you could choose the Recoilless Rifle, but sticking with the self-sufficient model of the build, you would carry the ammunition and self-reload. You could also take the Grenade Launcher, which is a solid choice and still accessible in the early parts of the game. Not only does this fit perfectly with the aggressive nature of the build, but it's also tailor-made for quickly taking out enemy emplacement, points of interest, or destroying nests without having to get too close to them. Replacing the Eagle Airstrike is the Eagle 500 kg Bomb, which is a powerful air-to-ground explosive that delivers a large payload. This is perfect for pushing into the harder difficulties, as you'll have to contend with more challenging enemies, such as the Bile Titan. 
Replacing the Gatling Sentry is actually our first orbital call-in in all of our build guides, the Orbital Laser or Orbital Rail Cannon Strike. Both are powerful and able to deal massive amounts of damage, but the function is slightly different for each. The Orbital Laser fires a continuous beam for a short period of time, damaging anything it touches, but it is limited in that a Helldiver can only call this stratagem in a total of three times per mission. On the other hand, the Orbital Rail Cannon Strike delivers a charged shot at an automatically acquired target, prioritizing the largest threat in the area. This is more effective at dealing damage to higher value enemies, but doesn't have the same AoE capabilities as the Orbital Laser. At the end of the day, you'll have to determine what's most valuable to you. To support this build, we'll have to look across multiple ship modules, but with the right combination of upgrades, you're looking at a seriously potent loadout. First, the essentials. You'll want to invest points in the hangar ship modules. Liquid ventilated cockpit reduces the Eagle stratagem cooldowns by 50%, pit crew hazard pay reduces Eagle rearm time by 20%, and expanded weapons bay increases the number of Eagle stratagems used per rearm by one, which means an extra 500 kilogram bomb per rearm. Then you'll want to consider investing in the robotics workshop. Dynamic tracking reduces all sentry deployment times, Shock Absorption Gel increases ammo for all sentries by 50%, and High Quality Lubricant allows sentries to rotate to targets more quickly. This is the biggest game changer and turns autocannon sentries into an absolute menace, closing the gap on arguably its biggest weakness. As far as armor goes, there's really only one choice in the early parts of the game, the CE-35 Trench Armor. This further reduces recoil when crouching or prone by 30%, which makes the autocannon have almost no vertical recoil when crouched. It does still maintain some horizontal recoil, but that's really not that big a deal. It also increases initial inventory and holding capacity of grenades by plus two, depending on if you're going impact grenades for threat burst damage or HE grenades to bust bug tunnels and automaton bunkers, having an extra two grenades lets you be much more aggressive and self-sufficient. At the time of making this video, armor mitigation is still broken, so all sets take the same amount of hits to kill you. Until this is fixed, you should consider using any of the light armor sets because the move speed is also fantastic. With the entire loadout assembled, let's circle back and break down everything in one concise view. For armor, you'll want to check out the CE-35 Trench Engineer, which reduces recoil when crouched or prone, plus gives us a couple extra grenades. For weapons, you can choose the SMG-37 early, but eventually you'll want to pick up the SG-225, which is just too good to pass up. For a secondary, I highly recommend the P-19 Redeemer, which is just lights out as an early option. For stratagems, you'll want to pick up the Auto Cannon, Eagle Airstrike, Gatling Sentry, and HMG Emplacement. As you level up, you can expand your stratagems. You'll most likely want to replace the HMG Emplacement with the Auto Cannon Sentry. Since we have the Auto Cannon Sentry, we can replace the Auto Cannon Stratagem for either the Recoilless Rifle or the Grenade Launcher. You can also replace the low-tier Eagle stratagems for the Eagle 500 kilogram bomb. Finally, you'd replace the Gatling Sentry with either the Orbital Laser or Orbital Rail Cannon Strike, depending on your playstyle. As a reminder, the ship modules you'll want to invest in are the Hangar and the Robotics Workshop, as they provide the most benefits across the board for this loadout. With this playstyle, positioning is absolutely key. There's a huge difference between being aggressive and being suicidal. Deploying turrets with enough time and far enough away from enemies gives them time to deploy and start firing before enemies are applying pressure. Keeping them protected should always be a priority, especially in the case of the autocannon sentry. That weapon can single-handedly contain an entire terminated bug breach. Your sentry should always be set up ahead of your bomb call-ins if possible, or directly as the airstrikes are hitting. This ensures your bombs are drawing the enemies out and the sentries are cleaning up any remaining enemies. With this aggressive playstyle, your goal is to get to a location ahead of your allies and set up emplacements so that when the action begins, you've effectively laid the trap to keep the enemies exactly where they spawn. It allows your teammates to move around freely, drawing most of the aggro yourself. It even allows you to solo some objectives while your team takes care of larger objectives. By being so aggressive, you'll likely encounter ammo restocks well before your team. If someone on your squad is running supply packs, you should be able to maintain your own ammunition out in the field, leaving more supply packs for the rest of your squad. A quick note about the autocannon support weapon, always keep your eye on your magazine. It reloads five rounds at a time, with one full mag being made up of 10 rounds. This means your reload can only trigger after 50% of the ammo has been depleted. 
Between waves of enemies, you can fire off a round or two, allowing you to fully reload so that you're ready for whatever the game throws at you next. Ultimately, this build breaks down like this. The initial loadout we talked about yields better results when you stay with your team and can add to the overall damage landscape. Once you've pushed a little deeper into the build with some of the enhancements we talked about, you are quite literally a one-man army, even when playing on some of the hardest difficulties. So there you have it, our high threat build guaranteed to help you pugnacious frontliners tackle any front. Of course, there's so many great builds in this game that you could go with, so if you're rocking something you think we should include in our next video, drop us the details in the comments below. Be sure to let us know what weapons and stratagems you're using, and if we spotlight your build, we'll be sure to shout you out in the video. As always, if you like our Helldivers 2 content and want more videos like this in your feed, be sure to drop us a like and consider subscribing. We've got more builds and guides coming your way, so keep it right here and never miss a thing. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.